Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to look into reactive forms, which is a way of building forms in Angular, which allows you for a more reactive approach to handling form data. All right, so jumping into the first thing you need to do in order for you to utilize or use the reactive forms is essentially importing it within the app module or the module you want it to be used in. So here we'll go ahead and import it from Angular forms. So once, the, once it's imported in the app module, we can go ahead and jump to the component file. Here we are going to do a couple of things. So first thing we want to do is we want to inject the form builder, which will allow us to create forms with less boilerplate code. Second thing we want to do now is we want to create a, a variable called my form, which is going to be of the type form group. And the next thing we want to do is essentially give it a, a value. So here we'll give it a value with two different controls, so name and email. And we also want to give the name a required validator, which essentially will mean that it needs to have a certain value, more than one character in this case. And for the email, we want to say we want you to be filled in, but we also want you to fulfill the email validator. Keep in mind that Reactive Forms has a lot of built-in validators. You can also build in your custom validator. You can also build in async validators, which is something I will present in another video. So when you have your form defined, we can jump into the HTML file. We can give it some, we will create a form, which essentially will say form group is pointing towards the form that I just created. And we're going to create some form controls. So we'll create a, a label. We will create a form, an input field, which essentially will have the form control name. So the name here needs to match whatever we have here, right? All right, so we'll do the same thing for the email. So it's the exact same logic, right? So once this is done, we pretty much have a form. So let's go ahead and give it a styling real quick. So we'll give it some, some margins on the host so that it jumps in a bit so we can preview it in a nice way. The second thing we want to do is we want to say margin button 16 on each form control that we have. We also want to give uh, them a display block so that the label and input appear on, on different rows. And we also want to give some padding to the input field. All right. So now when we have our input field, there's a couple of things we can do with reactive forms. So for instance, we can say this my form value changes subscribe and then we can react to whatever is happening here. Right. So we can say we can react here and whatever will come in here will essentially be the change value. So it should be the value from the form. All right. So if we would open our console in this way and we can see whatever happens here, you'll see that whatever I fill in will be coming from the it will be coming from the last changes so it how it has my email it has my name now all right so there's also a couple of other things you could use so you have status changes so in this case it will just print out the statuses of the of the actual form so it's invalid here since i haven't filled in the email so if i go ahead and fill in a valid email like this, it goes and say that it is in fact valid. So, all right, this is how you utilize the reactive forms and essentially the form group together with a form control. All right, so now let's look into form arrays. So what is essentially a form array? Form array could either have a group as an item. So it's an array that has a form group or a certain control. So you can, you can decide whether you want a complete group or or a singular item. So imagine now we're going to insert a couple of users. So with name and email, and we wanted to be able to, to upload a couple of them at the same time. So in this case, what we can do is we can create, let's go ahead and, and create a, a form. So we can say my form array, which is going to be of the type form array. Then we are going to go ahead and say my form array equals to this FB array and it's just going to take a simple form array in this way. So when we have it in this case, we have an, an empty array of form items. So usually what you do is you copy whatever you have in the group. So you say create form group and it's going to return the form group that we initially wanted it to return. So we'll do it like this. So we can essentially now say this and we call, uh, can be good to, to spell it correct. So and here as well. So in this case, we're going to utilize the form group and we're going to create a new instance of a form group and we're going to push it to the form array. All right, so there's a couple of things we need to, need to do in order for us to actually utilize it within the HTML. I would say this is one of the flaws of the reactive forms. So 
form array controls so you need to form group you're going to give it a type so that in the HTML we can also see that what type it has and you're doing like this so essentially you're going to to have a getter which essentially is going to point towards the controls so one control is one item in the array so it would for instance be this form group that we're creating in the constructor and you're going to say that it's an array of form, form groups because you would have to know this within the html otherwise there would be some issues all right saving this we can go back to the html let's let's go ahead and do some changes we'll remove the form we had for for the singular item we're going to look through the form array controls which we just created in the ts file it's the getter function and we're going to print the just uh, items of form items and then we're going to declare that the form group is going to be one item in the array so we're going to have a unique form group for each row so now what we want to do is essentially we we want to just paste in whatever we had before so saving this you would have the item that we immediately add within the constructor so you would have this item here all right so let's make it more funner and let's let's make it we want to be able to delete we also want to be able to add more items so we'll just create a button to delete it and we're going to pass in the index that we define here so the index of the array item or the object within the array the form group in this case and we're also going to add an add function which essentially we just added so going to the component ts file we're going to make sure that we have add form item which essentially we take nothing but it will essentially just say this my form array and it's going to push the new form group that we have here so also bear in mind that it, it is we have default values which is an empty string and then we have the the validators that will come for each one of the items we add all right so this is how you add an item to the array so it's like if you have been working with arrays before this will be pretty easy for you so removing them in in uh, from the form array you will be able to utilize the remove at and then the index of the item so this is something we pass in from the html to make it easier for us so now we have two, two buttons here. So deleting should remove it. And when you add it, we should be able to add hundreds of them if you'd like to. And this is one way of actually using reactive form arrays. All right, so now we have four items here. So the question is now, how do I receive the values of the items when I press submit? So we'll now change this to this stop my form array invalid because it will still be able to, to figure out whether it's valid or not. but the way to actually access the value of the form group or the form array or the form control for that sake would be to just say this form array value so whenever we press the submit button we removed it from here but we can go ahead and copy it back so that we have it like this and we can go ahead and just open the console tab submit nothing happens so that's um, yeah, it makes sense. We need to have the click listener to call the submit function. Previously, we had the submit on the form. We do not longer have that anymore. So we're moving it out in this way. We could have a form, but I'm too lazy to add a form right now. But so when I press submit, it will give me the array value. So it will no longer be a form array. So when I do dot value, it will turn it to an actual object. So let's go ahead and add a couple of them to see what will happen when I press submit you see i have three items now filling in something on the third row would essentially just give me that all right so this is one way of using reactive forms it's quite similar to to reactive uh sorry the form form arrays are quite similar to the form groups what differs them from each other is essentially you have an array instead of having controls so you can in the form array you could have form group <laughs> but it could also be the other way around that within the form group you have a form array so it's like yeah moment 22 but that's the way you could use it so now we have gone through form groups we have gone through form array we have also gone through for how we build up the forms with form builder you could do it without form builder but that will require you shitloads of boilerplate code so we could just to visualize this we could have done this and let's go for the group instead uh, is equal to new form group and then here you would just have the control in this way so 
instead of writing it like we did down here we need to write it as we did up here so it's it's quite a lot of more boilerplate code you have to give it the type here and so on i prefer to have it like we have down here but that's also a choice for you to make all right so we have the last thing we want to look into and that's the most basic one is the essential form control so you can just specify the form control in this way so you do not have to have a form array or form group in order to use the control you can just have the control here and you can listen to changes from the html so at the top i would say this is my lonely control right so we'll have an input we can say form control now you need to give it this value here that we have so we need to give it the form control like this so we need to pass in the actual control as 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 the object it is to the input function all right so this is one way of actually using a form control so it, we can just make sure that we have subscriptions for it so we, what you could do is you can say this dot control value changes and then we can subscribe to that and alert the changes so we'd say value and we'd say just say alert the value that we have so when i print something you see it will just print out the value which essentially means that it actually subscribes to the changes and this is a common case to have a singular control maybe when you have one field you have a search field or something that does not require you to have a form group all right guys thank you for watching all the best bye